Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli and welcome back to an episode of the Hand of the Day. I'm excited to share this one with you guys because it's an epic hand between Justin Bonomo and Fedor Holtz, two of the greatest tournament players in modern poker. And they're playing heads up at the legendary 2018 one drop event. Well, these guys are, are both dragons. They're both great players. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and sometimes, sometimes they get you with the fangs, sometimes they get you with the tail. Sometimes they get you with the fire. <laughs> Fangs, tail, or fire. Yeah. Justin living up in Vancouver now. Moved there last year. He likes the... There's actually a pretty strong poker community up there because they can play online poker up there. Vancouver's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You can eat off the street. It's so clean. Here we go. Look at this. Bonomo's making his move. Now, Fedor made his move with the four or five of spades. Bonomo's making his move with the 8-4 of diamonds. Neither one of them had great timing. One ran into ace-8, and the other ran into king-jack. You see a little jiggle in the body of Fedor whenever he's got to go deep into that tank of his, and he just kind of jiggles a little bit, and his eyes open wide. I don't know whether that's from fear or opportunity. I think it's, I've seen it on both ends. We have 55 big blind effective stacks, 500k, 1 million blinds, and Fedor raises on the button to 2.8 million with King Jack offsuit. Very standard. You're going to see players going a little bit bigger here pre-flop because players are defending so wide from the big blind that Fedor wants to make it a little bit bigger here, charging Justin a little bit more. Now, Bonomo, on, on the other hand, has 8-4 of diamonds, and this hand could really get be played as either a call or a three bet. You're definitely not gonna be folding this hand. You're gonna wanna play almost all of your suited hands defending the big blind heads up. Remember, heads up, you're gonna be playing a much wider range of hands. While this hand would normally be garbage in a full ring cash game, for example, heads up, it's, a, it's a definitely a playable hand. You have to be continuing with a large portion of your hand range. So Justin Bonomo decides to three bet here, which is a fine play with this type of hand. It probably plays a little bit better having the lead in the pot because you could three bet and give yourself two chances to win the pot. Number one, you could win if your opponent folds pre-flop. And number two, you could win by C betting post-flop with the lead. Instead of being on defense, when you three bet, you're now on offense. Stacks are also pretty good for a three bet because it puts Fedor on defense and it puts him in a pretty tough spot. It's tough for him to call a large three bet, and if he does, he's not gonna have too many options post-flop to really maneuver through this hand. So I like the three bet here by Justin. I like the hand to do it with as well, and he wasn't overly three betting during the match, so it's a good spot to pick. Now his sizing is also really effective. 9.5 million over a $2.8 million raise is a really good size. What I see people making mistakes here in doing in spots like these is they make it something like six or seven million. It's just too small of a raise and you don't wanna give a great player like Fedor a good price to call you in position because it's just gonna make your life miserable. Go for a size that gives yourself fold equity pre-flop, which again is one of the major reasons why you're gonna three bet. Back over to Fedor, who with King Jack has a very clear call. Again, remember, normally you're not going to be calling three bets with King Jack offsuit, maybe in a cash game, but heads up, this hand is definitely playable. Bonomo could be three betting with a wide range. King Jack is definitely playable. I love Fedor's call. Let's go heads up and take a flop. Very interesting. Now, uh, Fedor got punished with his 4-5. <laughs> Can Justin get away with it? Let's see. High board or low board? Uh, well, Justin's not getting punished at this point. He flopped a pair. What will Bonomo do? Eight million? Quarter of the pot. Small. Fedor has a lot to think about with the five million bet there. You hear the hum of activity here inside the Amazon room. Everyone here really excited to watch this match play out. They are having fun watching these guys put chips in the middle. A call from Fedor. The flop comes great for Justin. Queen 4-3 with two clubs. He flops middle pair and very likely to have the best hand at this point. Now he chooses a very interesting bet sizing here going for 5 million into 20 million. 
I really like this size for multiple reasons. Number one, the stack to pot ratio is pretty small. Sure, they're, they're deep stacked here, but he only has something like 40 million left, 45 million left. And he doesn't want to bet something like 15 million and then not have any fold equity if Fedor shoves. He doesn't want to be committed to the pot. He wants to give himself more opportunities to play this hand and maneuver through the hand uh, by betting smaller. The second reason why I love this bet size is it's better for his range. These players here are playing on a very high level, and Justin isn't always going to have a very strong hand here. He's going to want to be betting this flop most of the time. Queen 4 3 favors Justin's hand range more than it favors Fedor's hand range. In other words, Justin's going to want to be betting this flop most of the time. And by betting smaller, he allows himself to bet with more hands. So I really like this bet size from Justin. Now it's over to Fedor, who is in a tough spot. King Jack would normally be a fold if Justin had bet, say, 10 or 12 million, but when he bets 5 million, Fedor could still have the best hand, plus he's in position and maybe could take this pot away on a later street. Given the smallish bet size, I'm leaning towards a call here if I'm Fedor, but I still might fold this hand. You're definitely going to want to call with anything better than this if you're Fedor, say, ace high or any pair or any draw. King Jack with no back door is pretty borderline. It does play pretty well as a float. You do block some of strong queen combos that Justin could have, and you could conceivably bet the turn if Justin folds. You are also the chip leader, so you have a little bit more wiggle room in this spot as well. As played, Fedor calls, which is fine. We go heads up to the turn where things get interesting. We know at home here. Wow, fours and eights. Good pair now for Justin. Interesting. Can Bonomo check this? I mean, I think betting is a better play, but knowing an opponent's cards, check is definitely the play. Wow, nice check. Well done. Giving chance of Fedor to giving Fedor a chance to bluff it, bluff off some money, or hit a king or a jack and lose a bunch of money. Either way, Fedor is zero percent. Fedor, <laughs> he could bet like twenty million. I don't know. Eleven point five. Thank you very much. Nice check by Justin here. Justin, in progress of recapturing the chip lead here. I mean, if Justin somehow knew that Fedor had King Jack, of course he'd just call. Call. There it is. Nice. You don't think he's getting any more chips out of Fedor on the river, though, do you? If the King or a Jack comes. No, that's true. The turn comes in offsuit 8, and Justin has a little bit more than a pot size bet left. Now a lot of people in this spot would make what I think is a crucial mistake and opt to bet big or shove and protect their hand or try and get value. But this is the concept I'd like you guys to think about. If Justin has the best hand, he's much better off by checking. Remember, Fedor never has a flush draw in my opinion because all of his flush draws are just going to shove all in on the flop. They simply have too much equity and he's going to want to push all in to get fold equity with his flush draws. So Fedor either has a air or a weaker draw or a mid pair or a queen. Now against air, Justin is much better off checking and there's a decent amount of air in Fedor's range which he might turn into a bluff if Justin checks. Remember, he only bet 5 million into 20 million on the flop, which allows Fedor to call with more hands. This means Fedor has more bluffs in his range, not less bluffs, because of Justin's bet sizing on the flop. This means that Justin should be playing towards Fedor's bluffs more than he should be playing towards Fedor's value. Second, I love checking this turn because if Fedor does have a strong hand for value, Fedor's gonna bet anyway. If Fedor has king queen and he's trapping on the flop justin's going to win the same amount of money regardless of whether he bets or checks and that's because fedor's going to do the betting for him so you're much better off by checking in this spot giving your opponent a chance to hang himself and go for a big bluff or commit himself to the pot if justin does have the best hand and his opponent checks the turn he could simply go for value on the river and win a huge pot regardless I absolutely love this check by Justin, and it's a key turning point in the hand and a key turning point in the entire match. 
Now it's over to Fedor who has a clear bet. If he is going to float the flop with King Jack High, this is probably one of the worst hands he can have on this turn. He's definitely going to want to bet here and represent a strong queen, getting his opponent to fold a weak pair or something like an ace high. So I love this bet on the turn by Fedor betting 11.5 million. It's a smallish bet size, but he doesn't really need to bet that big. If Justin has a hand that he's trapping with, he's going to call any bet size. And if Justin has an air ball, he's going to fold to pretty much any bet size as well. So 11.5 million makes a lot of sense. I won't really see any reason to go bigger than that, given how Justin's going to react facing any bet size. Now it's over to Justin. Here's where I think players might make the second mistake in the hand. If they didn't already bet the turn or shove all in on the turn, I think here's where players say, okay, now I'm gonna protect my hand and shove all in or get value from my, my opponent's range. But if you think about this spot from Justin's point of view, he's much better off just calling here. Again, if Fedor's bluffing, he doesn't gain anything by shoving all in. And if Fedor does have something for value, let's say King Queen, he's gonna get all the money in on the river just by flat calling, making his range look weaker and allowing Fedor to value shove on the river. So I don't really see any reason for Justin to do anything other than call here and let Fedor think that his range is weaker than it is. When Justin calls this turn, it looks like he has something like a mid pair, maybe like, maybe like a 4x type hand, maybe 8-9 or something like that. A hand that might call a bet on the turn, but will fold to another barrel on the river. Giving your opponent this rope is definitely the way to go in this spot. That's what Justin does, and let's go to the river. So Fedor manages not to pair up. Check to him again. He found resistance with his big bet on the turn. Fedor could, I mean, he's in this mood, I'm telling you. We've seen, we've seen uber aggression. All He's in. all in. The river comes in offsuit six, and Justin has a clear check here. He's going to want to tell the same story he told on the turn, that he maybe has some weak type of bluff catcher, letting his opponent think that if he checks this river, his opponent could go all in, either for value or on a bluff. Now it's over to Fedor, who has a really tough choice. His opponent showed that he's going to likely be calling down on the turn here, maybe leading him to think he's going to call down on the river. Fedor has to really think, you know, is it worth it to bluff in this spot? All the draws, not all the draws missed, but you know, the flush draw missed, which he probably doesn't have a flush draw given how he called, given that he played the hand this way on the flop, just flat calling, but still, some of the draws missed, and he's basically only repping a strong queen when he shoves this river. He's only repping something like queen, jack, king, queen, ace, queen probably shoves all in preflop. So he's really repping not that many hands for value. And he really has to think, is my opponent going to give me credit here? Now, from a game theory standpoint, Fader has probably the worst hand he can have. He doesn't have that many worse floats than this. He does, again, block some strong kings, some strong queens, excuse me, like king queen and queen jack. So this is a great candidate to go for as a bluff. It does make a lot of sense to bluff here. And if he is going to float the flop, he kind of has to go with this bluff in my opinion. I think it's just a little bit too loose to float the flop, bet once on the turn, and then kind of give up. I think if you're going to play the hand this way, you really have to go for the max um, effort to try and win this pot and just go for it. If you're going to float this flop with King Jack in position against a great player like Justin, you're committing yourself to the pot when he checks the turn. You got to go for it and set this up for a multi-street bluff. In the end, I love Fedor's bluff here. It's just unfortunate that he wound up against a great hand and a great play by Justin who opt to trap. Fedor opts to jam the river, can't blame him. Justin has a very clear snap call in this spot. Really not much else to do with two pair here. You're absolutely loving this spot and the play worked brilliantly. Congrats to Justin who made an amazing play. Congrats to Fedor as well who played this tournament epic. Two of the greatest tournament players of all time. Seeing them go heads up in this event was truly awesome. And uh, congrats to Justin for going on to win and becoming the most winning tournament player of all time, breaking Daniel Negreanu's epic streak on the number one list. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, subscribe to my channel. More awesome content coming your way every Tuesday right here at Conscious Poker. Thank you for your time, guys, and thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Cheers.